Okay, uh, we're going over domain range of the function. They've given us a question where they said that um, they're making a fence at against the back of their barn. So we weren't too clear on that part. But what we realize is what that means is this is actually only going to be a fence with three sides because we don't need a side for the barn. It's going to be attached to the barn. Okay. They said they have 24 meters of fencing. Or of fencing. Okay. Do you know what what, what geometric mathematical, mathematical term deals with um, fencing or the outside of a shape? It starts with a P. Perimeter? Yeah, perimeter. So what they're talking about is if the perimeter, you have a total of 24 meters to work with. Okay. So we're going to write the perimeter of this function or of this shape. Um, we're going to call, okay, the perimeter is going to be equal to, this is a width, this is a width, and this is a length, right? Yeah. So the perimeter is equal to 2w plus l. Yeah. Okay, we have that much information. And in fact, we know the perimeter itself is the number 24. Okay, 2w plus l. Um, we're going to call width x. Yeah, you got it right. Okay, yeah. we're going to denote it with that will be x and that will be x. So our question now becomes 24 is equal to, we replace w with the term x mm -hmm. plus l. Okay. Now, we want to make reference to this because this is going to be a function, so we're going to find all the different areas involved in this. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this equation to solve for L. Okay. So we're now, once we have this information, we're going to set it equal to L. So this becomes 24 minus 2x is equal to L. So our new length, when width is x, is 24 minus 2x is our new length. Okay. Now they ask you in the question, express the area of the garden as a function of width. So express the area of the garden. So area is length times width, right? So let's just kind of highlight these so we have an idea of what we're talking about. So these are widths. We have that information here. That's what we're talking about when it comes to the width. We're talking about the x. And our length is these guys, right? And this is what we're talking about length. So we solve for length when going through all this information. So they said express the area. Well, this is an expression of area. Area is equal to length times width. Well, let's plug in our values for length and width. Our area is 24 minus 2x. We know that. Sorry, not our area, our length. And our width is the letter x. Okay. But they also want you to express it as a value. Uh, Express the area of a garden as a function of its width. Yeah, so this would be the function of its width. Okay? Um, because we're, and the reason what we're saying is it's a function of our width, because we called the width the variable. If we called L our x variable, we'd have a different um, equation for the width of this thing. Okay? But we set it equal to the width being x. So it's a function of the width in this question. Um, what we can do is we can now try to simplify this question when we plug our values in. Um, well, we can expand and simplify first of all. So a distributive yeah. property. So I distribute this x to both terms inside. We would get, I'm going to just switch the order of it, negative 2x squared plus 24x. Does that make sense? We multiply. And now I factor. Well, I can actually factor out negative 2x from each of these. So I'd have negative 2x is equal to x minus 12. Okay. So we now have information on all of this as a of what would essentially be known as our x-intercepts. Okay. This is going to be a quadratic equation. In fact, it is a quadratic equation because of this, right? We have x squared. Right? So we know this is a quadratic equation. So in other words, it, the area of this fence is going to do something like this. Okay? So as the width on our x-axis gets larger, the area will eventually meet a maximum and then start coming down again. So as we change its shape is what we're saying. So we can start off with a fence that looks very small like this for width, and then we'll have another fence that's a little more because we have a set amount of fencing to work with. So our fences are going to start to look like this, then like this, and then like this. Well, one of those options of fences will give us a maximum area. Yeah. Okay? And that's what the quadratic represents. 
Our quadratic is going to represent all the different options of our width in terms of their length. So the width is the independent variable. That's what they said uh, in the question to express the garden as a function of its width. Our width is our x-axis. So as we change our x-axis, our area is going to go up, 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 hit a max, and then come down, 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 down as we change the width. Yeah. And that makes sense because this is our quadratic. So we can actually graph what this is going to look like. So when we go to graph what this will look like, we have something like this. Well, let's get into this part here. This is what's important. I've now factored this. This is standard form of a quadratic. Does that make sense? Do you know standard form? Yeah. Okay, that's the standard form. I'll highlight it for you. Uh, it's just the purple part, not the division. Yeah. That's in standard form. Our other part here is now in... This is in factored form. Yeah. Okay? So now that we're in factored form, it's easy to find our x-intercepts. How do we find our x-intercepts? Uh, well, let's think of it like this. Remember, this y and x-axis is a function of width versus area. So what it's saying is, as we change our width, what happens to the area of this? And we know it's some parabola like that. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, to find the x-intercepts, when we're on the x-axis, what's our area going to be equal to? When I'm sitting on this line. We're talking of an area of what? Um. So, one, two, three, what is area here? No. Zero. So along that x-axis, we're talking about area being oh. zero. Okay, so that's what our x-intercepts... Oh, you still on the eraser there. That's what our x-intercepts are going to be when area is equal to zero. Okay? So we take these two values now and think of them like this. Okay? And we're going to set it equal to zero. So I have zero is equal to negative 2x and zero is equal to x minus 12. Well, in this one, x is zero. So when the width is zero, obviously our area is going to be zero, right? Because we don't have a fence. And in our other option, x is equal to 12. Okay, well, when the math. width is 12, we're going to have zero area too. Okay, and let's try to make sense of that. So one of the x-intercepts here, I'm just writing a rough sketch, okay? It's not exact. And 12, those are our two x-intercepts. Let's try to make sense of that. Obviously, obviously if, if this here, if this distance, we'll do the magic. If this distance here is zero, then obviously we're not going to have a fence, right? And if it's 12 and this is 12, well, we've used all of our fencing and we don't have anything for a width. Yeah. Okay? So that's what it's saying that we'll have no area at those points. Yeah. Okay? So those are our x-intercepts. And then from there, we could even find what the max would be. Do you have an idea of how we find the max with this information? Maybe when you know the zeros? Yeah. You Add them together and then divide by two. That's exactly right. That's called the axis of symmetry. Yeah. So we add them together, which is 12 plus 0 is 12. Right? 12 plus 0 is 12 divided by 2. It's going to give us 12 over 2, which is what? Six. So when our width is what? Six. When width is 6, we're going to have a... When our width is 6, okay, we know we're going to have a max we got to figure out what the max area could be. So what do I do with this guy? Let's plug it back into our factor form. So area, and this is our factor form. That's what I'm talking about here. Okay, that was our factor form. Area is equal to negative 2. And then instead of putting x, we put 6. And 6 minus 12. And we solve for what area it could be. Well, this will become negative 12. And this becomes negative 6. Negative 12 times negative 6 is positive... 72. Did I do that too fast? No, I just added Well, it's 72. Okay, I think we're in meters. So what it's saying is the max area of this would be 72 meters. Okay? So our vertex is at 6 and 72. So what that means is we have a shape of something like this in terms of our parabola. So as the width changes, as it grows up to 6, the fence's area gets larger. And then once we pass 6, the area of the fence gets smaller and smaller again. 
So this question really asks us what the domain range of this function was. What's the domain range of the area of this possible thing? Well, we go and look at our quadratic to figure that out. Okay? In function notation, the domain obviously can't be less than zero. We can't have negative fencing. And we know we can't go past 12. So our domain is x is a set of all real numbers. Because we could choose any width we want. Yeah. As long as it's between what? Uh, yeah, zero and 12. That's right. So that's the domain of our function. Mm -hmm. The range of our function would be the lowest area, which would be what? Zero. Zero. So y, er. Y is every real number as long as it's between mm -hmm. zero and what's our max? 72. And 72. Mm -hmm. So that would be the domain range of this area function. We had to make it into a quadratic so we can make sense of the domain range. Oh, okay.